Take a look at this picture. What do you think will happen next? Do you have any idea? Well, this is actually one of the questions in my book called Selpip Speaking Practice. My book has over a hundred questions and answers and tips and lots of vocabulary that will help you practice for the speaking part of the Selpip test. Okay, now this is task four of the speaking test called Making Predictions. Are you good at making predictions? Well, in this video, I'm going to try to help you improve in your prediction making ability. Okay, so hey, if you want to get a copy of my book, you can just buy it on my website, metv.cool, just in PDF form. It's very easy. You just go to my website and download my book. Okay, so like I said, task for making predictions. Now you have 30 seconds to prepare, which is not that long, and you have 60 seconds to speak. Okay, so you need to think fast. Now, you might be wondering, should you take notes? Hmm, should I take notes for this picture? Well, you could. I think for most of the questions on the test, or on the speaking part of the test, and on the listening and other parts, it's good to take some brief notes. Okay, but for this question, personally, I wouldn't take any notes because the picture itself is your notes, right? You can just look at the picture and make some predictions about, you know, what's going to happen. Now, in this question, you're going to use a lot of simple future verbs. Okay, this is very important. The Selpa people have chosen these questions to test you on certain aspects of the English language. Okay, for example, um, giving advice, uh, describing a picture, talking about a personal experience. In the personal experience, which is task two, you have to use past tense verbs, right? Here, you have to use future tense verbs, okay? So there are two ways we can make the simple future verb tense, right? We can use the word will or is going to, right? The bartender is going to or the people playing poker are going to, okay, so is, are, that changes, okay, but these are the two ways we make predictions uh, for the future. Now, sometimes <laughs> my students who I've practiced with, they make predictions like this. The musician will keep singing. Okay, that's a fine prediction. Yeah, it could happen. The musician will keep singing. The, the problem with that is it's not very interesting. Right? There's not much more you can say about that, right? Like, if we look at this picture, and if we say the guitar player is going to keep singing, the, the guys playing pool are going to keep playing pool, the guys playing poker are going to keep playing poker, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's probably what, what will happen. The problem is, on the self test, I mean, your predictions should be a little bit more interesting. Okay, so try to think about what is going to change. What is going to change in the scene, okay? Maybe the guitar player will get thirsty and he'll go to the bar and order a drink. Or maybe the bartender will bring the guitar player a cold pint of beer. Maybe, uh, you know, one of the guys playing poker will lose all his chips. Those things are called poker chips, right? When you lose all your chips in poker, then the game is over for you. <laughs> so it's just a bit boring if you sit there, right? So he might get bored. He might start playing pool, uh, you know, with these guys, or he might go to the bar. He might leave the pub, if this is a pub or the bar. He might leave and go home. I mean, we don't know, right? Now, the next thing I want to mention is, is try to keep your predictions relevant. Relevant. That means, I mean, talk about things that are going to happen in the picture, okay? Like, if you say this guy is going to lose all his chips and go home, and when he's at home, he's going to help his wife cook supper. After supper, they're going to bake cookies together. Then they're going to put their kids to bed. Okay, 
Wow, those are great predictions. The problem is that they have nothing to do with this scene. Okay, so your predictions need to be relevant to the scene. Okay, now how should you start your answer? Well, there are lots of ways you could start this. I mean, personally, I would say something like this. In this picture, there are several things I think will happen next. It's just a very natural way to introduce, you know, the answer. In this picture, there are several things I think will happen next. First off, then I would start with the biggest thing in the scene. The biggest thing. I mean, maybe the picture has a car accident in the middle of the picture. And it might have some kids playing with a ball in the corner of the picture. Now, if you start talking about the kids, I mean, that's probably okay. But I think it, the most natural way to do it is to start with the biggest things. Like, a car accident is a very serious thing, right? I mean, in my book, you'll see one of the pictures is a fire truck, uh, you know, putting, putting out a fire, uh, on, like in a house. A house is on fire and the firemen are working to put out the fire. And there are some kids playing in the corner on a, a playground, in a playground in the corner of the picture. Like, if you start talking about that, it's just a little bit unnatural, I think. So the most natural thing is to start with the biggest things in the picture. Okay, now look at this picture. What is the biggest thing? Well, I mean, here's an example of a scene where it probably doesn't matter where you start because there are, well, there are four things happening, right? There's this guy who's playing guitar and singing. There's these guys who are playing pool. There's these guys who are playing poker. And then there's the, the situation at the bar, okay? So, I mean, wherever you start is probably okay. Personally, I would probably start at the poker table or maybe at the pool table. I don't know. It's up to you wherever you want to start. Okay, so uh, the other thing is try to make predictions about most of the things in the scene. Most of the things. Now, I've seen some of the pictures, uh, you know, from the, the self practice materials, and sometimes there's a lot of things going on in the scene. You might not be able to talk about everything. That's okay. That's totally fine. You don't need to talk about everything. But I would say, try to make predictions about most of the things in the scene. If you just spend all your time talking about one or two things, I mean, that's probably not that great, okay? Let's say we, we make a prediction that the guitar player is going to go to the bar, order a drink, and start talking to the woman at the bar. And, uh, they're going to start flirting, you know, he's going to get her phone number, uh, he's going to buy her a drink, uh, they're going to get drunk, they're going to leave the bar. Okay, look, I've spent my whole time talking about one thing. I didn't talk about all the rest of the scene, okay, so that's not good. You should try to talk about uh, a bunch of things that are going to happen. Okay, so how should you end your uh, speaking? Well, how should you end the question, your answer to the question? Um, you could just say this. All right, those are some things I think will happen next. That's how I would do it. I would just say, all right, those are some things I think will happen next. That's a great short summary, a short conclusion to your answer. Okay, now let's take a look at my answer uh, from my book, okay, about this question. So here's what I say. I think several things are going to happen in the next few minutes. One of the guys playing poker is going to lose all his chips. He'll get bored sitting at the table and start playing pool with the other guys. The guy with the beard is going to sink a few balls. Okay, sink a few balls and win the game. That means put the balls in the pockets. Okay, the guy with the beard, right? Now the guy with the goatee is going to get really mad and hit the other guy with his cue. Okay, goatee, that's the style of facial hair. I made a lesson a few months ago on facial hair styles. Okay, so you can go check that out. I'll put the link to that either at the end of this video or I'll put it down there in the description. Okay, so with his cue, this thing is called the cue. When you play pool, the stick is called the cue. Okay, 
Um, the guy playing guitar is going to get thirsty and order a beer from the bar. The guy sitting at the bar is going to start hitting on the girl, but she's going to coldly reject him. Hitting on. Okay, now, I've explained all this vocabulary in my book. The page before this in my book explains the vocabulary uh, that I use in this answer. So hitting on means flirting with. He's going to start flirting with that girl uh, at the bar. Where am I here? Um, but she's going to coldly reject him. Okay, she's going to reject his, his flirting. Okay, uh, he's going to cope with his depression by getting hammered. Cope means deal with. He's going to get really depressed because she rejected him. So he's going to deal with his depression by getting drunk. Hammered means drunk. Okay, in the end, I think a huge bar fight will break out and the bartender will call the police. Okay, a bar fight is when everyone starts fighting each other, punching each other in the face. Okay. Anyway, those are some of my predictions in this scene. Anyway, those are some of my predictions in the scene. Now you'll notice this conclusion and this introduction are different from what I just said. I mean, that shows you there are many ways you can introduce uh, your answer or conclude your answer. Okay, so maybe try to practice with a few different introductions, a few different conclusions, and find one that sounds really natural for you. Okay, so let's do some homework. I want you to look at this picture and make some predictions about this picture. Post your answer down there in the comments and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.